Hi everybody, this is Nikki Jameson here and today I'm doing a little bit of a play around with the watercolour brushes in Rebel 6 Pro and I'm trying to get uh, an exploratory uh, thing going here but basically what I'm trying to do is to get these colours mixing and to get a kind of wet in wet uh, effect from these watercolour brushes. So I play around with watercolour quite a bit um, just to experiment to see what the brushes can do and uh, there's virtually no uh, limitations but it doesn't quite copy what traditional watercolour does just w just by putting the paint down but you can get something near enough if you make use of uh, layers and if you make use of the amount of water you have in your brushes. So what I've done here is um, I've used separate layers to just to experiment and explore, which I encourage you to do. So on this, on the first layer, I put down some paint. Then on the second layer, I put down some more paint. And on the third, I put down some more uh, paint, usually a lighter shade of the first paint mark I put down. So I'm going to do that again and I'm going to see whether uh, uh, see what we can get here before putting down paint it's very important to check your visual settings and to make sure that you set them where you want especially for for watercolor so i've set this to granulation one certain colors actually are more um have a granulation effect uh, and have more of a granulation effect than others and certain colors mix more or mix better than others but i have set my edge darkening to around eight i've made my diffusion speed six can increase it a bit if you'd like it to diffuse a little bit faster and i've made my rewet um, around seven and the absorbency eight i might bring that down a little bit so as i said this is always exp exploration so we're going to see what we're going to um, how far we're going to get so i'm going to use my existing layers here so and then maybe we'll see if we're going to create some other ones so on my first layer which is called layer three um, but think of it as layer one i'm going to put down this um, dark blue and i'm using the um, the brush called linear two at the moment now because of the quality of the brushes you can experiment with the different brushes because they do give a different effect. And actually my fa my most favorite brush is my bristle brush, this brush, because I feel that it puts down paints in the way that I like it. And I've kind of changed it to suit what I, what I like. So I was using linear, I'm gonna use bristle. So you can see on this first layer, you can see the paint actually flowing there or diffusing. Now I'm gonna put down I'm going to go to a lighter shade of that same paint. So right now I'm actually doing it on that same layer. Right, so I'm painting right into the wet paint here. But you can see that it's blending quite nicely together here. What I also can do is to go to blending and actually blend some of that in. It just really depends on what you want to do. So let's go back to paint. Uh, the opacity is roughly about half and I've made it not a huge brush. It's still flowing here, but what I'm gonna go, do is go to layer two, or well, it's called layer one, but go to the layer above. And I'm going to play with a, let's see, let's try this Ali, Ali Zarin Crimson, okay? And I'm going to just dab into into the uh, this is in effect wet paint, so it is painting wet into wet here, even though it's on a separate layer, it is actually flowing into into the blue paint here. So, and what you can do here, you can. Um, can actually go to your blending and once again you can blend you can blend this now this is not perfect everything is experimentation but I kind of like 
the effect that I'm getting here. So I'm going to go back to paint. Now make a note that for this to have, um, for this to work, I'm going to add a little bit of, let's see what happens if we add a little blue, more blue in this top layer. For this to work, yeah, that's that looks really nice. I like that. So I added some blue into into there. I've got the water pretty high. For this to work, you need to have your water set fairly high. But if you want to take the water down, you can actually control the paint flow a little bit more. So I'm going to blend that a bit. And, I, and you will notice I've got the pigment mixer on, so it should actually mix the colours and give you a kind of purpley colour. So I like the way it's still wanting to flow into the red paint because this is just this is just what I want actually. It's actually flown past it considering it's on a separate layer. So if you don't want the paint to flow quite as much, you can actually fast fast dry. Okay, when you fast dry, it will stop flowing. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next layer, my topmost layer, and I'm going to add another layer of, uh, I'm going to add some more paint. Now it's up to you what you want to add. And quite frankly, I think I should have probably added the red last, but never mind. We'll, we'll see what happens here. So now I've added this. Um, which one is this one called? I think this is. I think this is gold oak ochre. You can still see the paint flowing. OK, if I add more water there. In order to prevent it getting too muddy, this is why you will use separate layers. I have found that if you put about, I don't know, two different colors on a layer, you're probably going to be OK, but you might find something slightly different works for you. OK, and I always try and I try and move the water around and you can use the tilt. I haven't really I have got my tilt on, but I've made it really uh, short and I'm not really bringing it right into the um, in, into the equation. But if I turn the tilt slightly to the left, the paint is going to flow to the left. So let's go back to our color sets. I don't want to get too distracted by the tilt. OK, so we've we've done this. I think I'm going to leave that uh, this particular one here. I'm going back to my bottommost layer. And uh, once again, I'm going to start with this blue with a different color blue. So let's let's see if we do it. What happens if we do it this way? OK. So this is on my first layer. And when you use layers like this, you get more of a, an opportunity. So this is a lighter shade. You get more of an opportunity to play with the layers without everything getting too mussed up and, and muddy. And don't forget, so this is actually gone. This is actually really interesting. It's flown so fast that it's actually taken over the dark here. So I might want to dab in some more paint there. And it's, you can see it's flowing slightly to the left. And I'm going to just dry that because I really don't want it taking over or flowing so so fast. And I think, I mean, my diffusion speed is five, which is already fairly, I mean, it's middle of the road. OK, so I'm going to go to my next layer there. Uh, on top of that, I'm going to go to, again, another, maybe this dark colour here. And I'm going to just do a stroke with my bristle brush. Sometimes it helps to make the brush a little bit smaller. OK, so you can imagine doing a kind of landscapey type of uh, thing with this. I'm going to do a lighter shade there at the top. And you can just see how it's flowing here. Um, I'm going to just dry that really quickly. You've got to, I th this is it's quite spontaneous, but you have to be very quick if you don't want the if you don't want everything to to just flow down your page. And so what I can do here 
let's go back to my layer one I'm on I'm adding blue and add a little bit more blue paint here and you can see it's about to flow there and I'm going to just dry that really quickly again um, and I, I kind of like how it's mixing in here I wasn't able to get that effect uh, or that output previously so I'm going to go to layer two again actually I'm going to go to layer three uh, really what I'm going to do here is just add I want to just add some crimson here so I'm on the third layer or the topmost layer and even though these are separate layers you can see it is starting to flow and the overall effect is that you're going to get a mixture of the paint here and as I say you can go and blend if you blend this you're actually going to blend in with the paint below which is really quite interesting okay so I've blended that in and I'm getting a really nice effect here I just make that a little bit bigger I'm also using a small canvas and I'm using a rough gesso paper I should have mentioned that at the beginning but I'm using a, one of the new rough gesso papers so that is having uh, quite a big effect on the uh, on the on the paint now I'm going to add a little bit more I should, I should maybe add some either titanium white or some light yellow there and then once again I want to blend that a bit so it does really quite run quite fast so I'm thinking that what I would do is reduce the divert the diffusion speed here but for the sake of this demo I don't want to I don't want to crimp it too much okay so I'm just going to dry that so now I'm on my topmost layer I can actually go back to my layer my, my first layer if I want and um, perhaps still using and I'm only using one particular brush here uh, let's add more here so the the bottom layer is is the freest layer let me call, let me put it that way because that's where the paint is really flowing now i'm going to try that it's a little fast i'm go i would probably make that diffusion speed about maybe four because it's really flows quite fast um let's put more i'm going to do alt and sample i'm going to go on layer two and don't forget you can make the tilt go upwards so there again I'm going to just let's just this and dry the layer when you put when you do dry the layer it's going to dry everything on that layer okay as opposed to just fast drying and once it's once you've dried it you won't be able to fast dry it because it's the program is already um, dry now the other thing you can do if you want is you can go to um, your uh, drying brush and just dry areas okay you could actually dry your canvas actually I'm on, ca I'm on layer two but let's say I was on layer one and layer one is where I've actually wet my canvas so that's really interesting it shows the water on layer one okay if I go to layer two doesn't really show any water there or at least it's not at the moment anyway okay so remember that it's the it's on it's your first layer it's showing the water so I'm going back to my watercolor um, and it should dry those areas all right so if I go to the top most one once more and I select let's select this mix of this color here or let's select something darker the topmost layer it will start to flow in don't forget I've reduced the diffusion but even so it's still flowing fairly nicely 
and then you can decide with whether you want to lighten that watercolor by adding more paint and maybe blending that paint in if that's what what you want so this is just using the watercolor brushes and I'm using separate layers to get this uh, wet kind of wet in wet uh, effect definitely needs a bit more playing around with but clearly using different layers with the watercolor and paying attention to your watercolor settings will give you some interesting outputs okay i hope you've uh, enjoyed watching this video thanks very much for watching perhaps i'll catch you in another video bye